I want to start by telling you a little story about how I kind of came up with the idea for this video. I go to the gym and it's by the side of a golf course, a phenomenal golf course, and from the gym I can see the eighth hole, the par three, beautiful hole, longish hole over water and you can see it there. Now I was in the gym taking a break and I watched a four ball tee off and all four of them had the same three faults in their goal swing. So then I thought to myself, well why don't I watch 20 golfers to see how many of those 20 also have those same faults. 90% of the golfers that I watched had these three faults on this particular hole. And a couple of them hit okay shots, but the majority of them missed the green and unfortunately dunked it in the water. So this first fault that we're gonna talk about was because of the situation, was because of the fact that there was water. As they got to the top, they spun on this back leg. Look at my end position, I'm rotated but I spawn on that back foot. Now, if you wanna come and have a quick look, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's like a little swirl mark here on the ground because my foot was there, as I spun, it spun on the board of the foot and it left this little mark here. So how are we gonna fix this? This is the first little exercise I would do with them. I would get them to use something like a bottle, it doesn't have to be a bottle, and I would get them to set up and place it right outside their back heel. And as they make their swing, if they created that same movement and made that sort of spin on that back foot, they would knock the bottle over. So take a setup, place the bottle there, and go ahead and make some swings where we want some rotation, absolutely. We've got to be turning those legs, but we've got to be shifting first. We've got to be moving to that lead side before we add the rotation. And if I do it in that sequence, if I shift and rotate, then I miss the bottle. So my heel is coming up, but it's coming up onto the toe. It's not rotating like this. We should be able to get pretty perfect strikes, miss the bottle, and in that nice balanced position. And if they could do that, they might be watching their ball land on the green. The next thing that they all did is actually quite closely linked to the first point that we just covered there. But let me go ahead and demonstrate again. Okay, so you can see like that first little demonstration in that first drill, I was stuck on my back foot. But the big thing that I saw, that hopefully you saw that in the video, tempo. So quick from the top. Now you've probably seen me in the past use, you know, the blast sensor. And I can get a lot of data on my tempo through that blast sensor. So I'm just looking at some data here from some swings that I've taken in the past. Three to one is what we're looking for as a ratio. So my back swing should be three times as long as my downswing. If you get your tempo way, way out, and all of these golfers, well, 18 of them, really had their tempo pretty out of sync. It's incredibly difficult to hit good shots. So, how do we work on tempo? Well, something like a blast sensor is fantastic because you get that data through your phone, straight away, instant, great to work with. But in terms of a drill, feet together drill is just one of the best. It's one of the oldest drills, but it's one of the best. You start with your feet together. You'll notice how I did that. I took my address to the golf ball and then moved my lead foot across to my trail foot. You make a backswing. And then as you're completing your backswing, you actually start your downswing by stepping across. Once you feel like you've planted that foot and you feel like there's some pressure through it, you can then swing the golf club through. So in terms of this little exercise, there's almost three different sections. There's almost a backswing, a step, and a through swing. So it's a backswing, a step, and a through swing. Three different parts. Now, if you asked, you know, the average golfer to describe the golf swing and its terms, they'd often say there's a backswing and a downswing. There is a backswing and a downswing, but there's also a transition. That transition has to be timed well, it has to be smooth, it has to be a gradual acceleration. So thinking about it as more three different sections is really useful. There's a backswing, there's a transition, and then there's a downswing. So let me show you what that would look like. Backswing, step, through. So, okay, nowhere near at full speed, which is a good job because we've got some deer. <laughs> just out there in the fairway. But that really gets me to feel what a great tempo is. And although that was slow and smooth, I can feel and sense that. And then I can build that speed up. You can increase speed without changing your tempo. And that's really important. So many golfers, when they want to increase speed and they want to hit it harder, when you're on a par three over water, that tempo gets out of sync because the speed gets applied far too soon. That step drill, is brilliant for feeling when the speed should be applied, which is through impact, not that sort of snatchy dousing that I saw from almost all of those golfers. Last fault that plagued 18 
of these golfers that were struggling on this par three. And it's actually kind of going back to basics. It's alignment. They were all aiming left. And you can see why, when you look at that hole, where does the water go? It kind of goes out to the right. And the further right you go, the longer the carry. So again, it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, you look at the hole, you look at the situation, the safest place to aim is left. But it doesn't work like that because as soon as they were aiming left, it meant that their golf club was cutting across the golf ball. When the golf club cuts across the golf ball, we don't transfer as much energy. Therefore, the ball doesn't come off as fast. We also create curve. So that ball is curving from left to right. It's actually moving towards the water. And when you have curve on a shot, it doesn't carry as far as well. So they would have probably felt over the golf ball, aiming that far left, they would have probably felt more comfortable because they're looking up and they're seeing a shorter carry and more dry land. But the reality is that alignment was, was causing so many problems for them and it was actually causing many of them to miss the ball on the right hand side. So it's a case of just trusting it and making sure you have a good process. So I would have said to these golfers, you know, stand behind it. Let's pick a safe target, a target based on your ability, but let's pick something on the ground, which is an intermediate target. So I'm looking at a little blemish here and a little speck there. And then once I've got that intermediate target, I've just got to commit to it. So the process for me then would be club face is aligned at that intermediate target build the stance around that. And then probably the most important part of alignments is what you do in order to confirm or check your alignment. We talk about parallel lines, you know, toes, knees, hips, shoulders. Your eyes will also be parallel to that line. So the best way for you to check your alignment is one of your looks, one of your glances at the target should be a rotation of the head. Because what that will do is it will take your eyes from this parallel position to your body and it will rotate them directly up your target line. So I can see straight away I'm looking almost over this yellow and red marker on the golf course down towards there's actually a little white marker in the fairway. That's really where I want to be. So that little head swivel allows me to see that. Many golfers when they set themselves up they look at the target by lifting the head and rotating. Suddenly my eyes go horizontal and I actually get a nice view of the hole. Looks great. It doesn't tell me where I was aiming. So if I was to sort of set up and aim left, and I look at the hole this way, I don't get any confirmation as to where I aimed. I don't know if I was good, if I was poor, if I was way out or a little bit out. So just process, you know, pick an intermediate target, club, body, head swivel to confirm it, and then we're in position. So if I could have got them to have good alignment, good tempo, and to shift their weight better, I'd almost guarantee that more of them would have hit the green and walked off in more parts.